Hi, this is Jess with Qantas Island. Today, I wanted to share with you two new products that will hopefully help streamline your production testing of audio power amplifiers. The first product is the QA450, which is a programmable 4 and 8 ohm load. This product works in conjunction with our QA401 audio analyzer, which first began shipping in 2015. The second product is a software application called Tractor. The QA401 is fully isolated from the PC, USB powered, and has differential I.O. on both the inputs and outputs. The maximum input is 26 dBV, or about 20 volts RMS. The QA450 is also fully isolated from the PC and USB powered. The QA450 can handle loads up to 300 watts for short periods of time, allowing rapid burst testing of amplifier subassemblies before they might have final heat sinking installed. The QA450 also provides a high side switch, current sense, and soft start, allowing a standard open frame power supply to be used instead of a much more expensive lab grade supply. The new open source tractor application makes it easy to quickly assemble a list of test scripts. You can adjust a range of parameters for each test or write your own tests if needed. All test results are logged to an HTML file, including screen captures of all measurements. This makes it easy for engineering to review failures using just a web browser. In the future, results will optionally be logged to a database, allowing even more detailed analysis on both yields and distributions. This is the block diagram for our test setup we're going to run shortly. You can see we have the power supply, which flows through the QA450 on the way to the amplifier under test. This is so the QA450 can switch the amplifier on or off, and also so that the QA450 can measure the DC current flowing to the amp. The amplifier drives the resistive loads inside the QA450, and a 6 dB attenuated differential version of the amp output is then sent to the inputs of the QA401. Here we see the actual test platform. The power supply is a fixed 48 volt 10 amp, with the output voltage trimmed up a bit to 51 volts. The amplifier under test is a TI TPA 3255 EVM Class D amp with 300 watt per channel. The QA401 and QA450 are connected as shown in the diagram, and they are powered via USB from the laptop. Here we see the three applications open on the laptop. On the left is the tractor application, on the lower right is the QA401 application, and on the upper right is the QA450 application. The test has been started, and it is currently paused waiting for the operator to enter the serial number of the board we are testing. The serial number is scanned in via a Bluetooth 3D barcode scanner. In the background, you can hear the QA450 load relays changing, and you can see the load temperatures changing in response to the applied power. Remember, the QA450 is using short bursts for these tests, and as long as the average power is below 5 to 10 watts over the test and board swap interval, you won't face any thermal issues. Let's take a quick look at how we built these tests we just watched run. Starting with an empty test plan, we first add a test to capture the barcode. That test is called ID input 01. Next, we add a test to turn the amplifier under test on. That test is called power 01. This test allows us to set an on or off power state and specify the range of current that is allowed to consider the test to pass. The TPA3255 EVM has a current consumption of about 115 milliamp when on and not playing any sound, so we'll pick an allowable range of 100 to 200 milliamp. We'd want to tighten that up a bit in production, of course. Next, let's make a gain measurement at 1K into 8 ohms. That test is called gain O2. Here, we have the ability to specify the test frequency and the output level. We expect the amp to have a gain between 27 and 28 dB, so let's test at minus 30 dBV. We also know that the QA450 has an attenuation of 6 dB built in. We indicated we wanted an 8 ohm load for the test gain, and since we expect the amp output to be around minus 2 dBV, we can use the plus 6 dBV input range on the QA401. If our signal were going to be much higher, due to either gain or a higher stimulus level, we'd want to use the 26 dBV range instead. Finally, 
we specify that we're willing to retry the test twice before failing. Sometimes a test might fail due to noise or a timing issue, but a retest will pass. This allows us to try a few times if needed. Here we see the full test plan that was run previously. Let's quickly step through each measurement. We started with test ID input 01, which allowed us to capture the barcode. Next, we turned on power and ensured the idle current consumption of the amp was between 100 and 200 milliamp. Then, we measured the noise of the amplifier with inputs muted. This measurement was into 8 ohms. Next, we made measurements at both 50 Hz and 1 kHz. These were made into 8 ohm loads with a level into the amplifier at minus 30 dBV. We made gauge measurements at 20 kHz twice, once into 4 ohms and then into 8 ohms. We also made efficiency measurements for both 4 and 8 ohm loads. Note we specified 0 dBV level into the amp, which is around 27.5 dBV out of the amp. Into the specified 4 ohms, this is about 140 watts. We made an amplifier output impedance measurement at 1 kHz. This was at an output level of minus 10 dBV, which would mean about 16.5 dBV out of the amp, which is about 11 watts into 4 ohms. For the last two tests, we looked at amp linearity with both THD and IMD tests. And in the final test, we turned the power supply to the amplifier off so that the operator could remove the board and insert a new board without worrying about arcing. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have more questions, please contact us at our website, www.quantasylum.com.